Hey out there. If you've watched any of my other videos, then you know that I have some passions about some, uh, some areas of life. Real estate investing, flipping houses. I went down to the casinos a couple times, shot a couple of videos on video poker. Yeah. I don't know how much you're going to get out of the video poker, except for entertainment. But the real estate investing and the flipping the houses... It's almost like I discovered like this, this nugget of gold, almost like it was a secret to the everyday guy out there that, you know, you can get wealthy. You can make a lot of money doing this stuff. And I want to share it with you guys. When I come across this secret, it's not a secret, but it's like the first time I'm hearing about it. I even made a video the other day about tax advantages of real estate. I guess what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give away anything that I that I have as far as where I find out something, knowledge or something like that. And I really do believe in having to give it away in order to keep it or even get more. So I, first of all, I like making videos. And then second, I really wish like somebody out there is like, hey, you know what? I looked at that Harry video and I think I could do real estate investing too. Matter of fact, I'm gonna. And then like a year from now, somebody texts me and say, hey, you know what? I bought the house down the street and I'm doing awesome. Man, that would make my day. I'm passionate about a bunch of different things. But I figured the videos that I make, I want to put out there that may be interesting to you guys. So today I want to talk to you about another area that I'm pretty passionate about. And that's becoming a better person. Sometimes I'm hesitant to make videos like this because <laughs> you might see me screaming at somebody when I'm driving down the road. Hey, yo! Actually, I don't do that. I'm a pretty good driver. But almost like I don't want somebody to see me outside and say, hey, listen, you talk about practicing love and kindness and tolerance. But yet you really weren't that nice that one day. <laughs> I don't think anybody could say that, but it's always in the back of my head. Well, today um, I had this little almost like an example of like it works, like being a better person and being kind and loving. And nah, I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect, but I try to practice that stuff on a daily basis, you know, being respectful and kind and, and decent to people. So here's the story. I wanted a cup of coffee, so I went to go to Dunkin' Donuts, but they had like 10 people in line. So I went down to the local Wawa. I really don't go down to that Wawa. I don't know why. Maybe it's not that convenient. Whatever. I get my coffee. I'm going up to the counter and I hear somebody in the background say, hey, Harry, what are you doing here? And I look over and I could... I can remember them, but <laughs> you get to be my age. Really, I'm not that old. I gotta keep on, I gotta stop saying that. Anyway, I recognize him, but I don't recognize him. And then he had a mask on, so he takes down the mask. And I said, hey, I know you. What's your name? He told me his name. And I said, how you doing? He said, good. He said, you remember me? And it was kind of blurry, foggy. <laughs> but he said, uh, I used to work down at the, the other Wawa in Neptune. Because now I'm talking to him and he has the Wawa uniform on. And I said, oh yeah, what's your name? We started talking a little bit. And uh, I said, what are you doing down here? And he points up to the wall, like, like that picture, like that's the picture. And he says, it's my Wawa now. Like he's the, the main dude there. He's the main manager there. And he's like brimming, like, is it brimming? He's like beaming. He's all smiley and stuff. So we talked for a little bit because him and I used to talk when I was down at Wawa. And he asked me, are you still into that financing stuff? I told him a little bit about real estate and everything else. So I, I knew him from about four years ago when I worked at this company where we acclimated people with severe mental illness back into the community. And I worked down in like the Neptune Asbury Park area. So I gave him my card because he was looking for a house. And I said, hey, listen, I, I'm not doing that as like a realtor. But if you want a second set of eyes on it, I'll give him a card. And we exchange pleasantries. Here's, here's where I'm going with this. As I get out to my car, then, poof, then I remember. I remember Carl. That's his name, Carl. He's like in his early 30s. So if I refer to him as a kid, <laughs> anybody under 40 is a kid. But I remember Carl from the Wawa down in Neptune because I would go in there two or three times a day. I'm a coffee drinker, and that was a really local Wawa. 
Well, Neptune has a high concentration of people with severe mental illness. Maybe because I was in that field, I recognized it. But really, looking back, the infrastructure of... Anyway, I'm not going to go into detail. That Wawa attracted a lot of people with mental illness, drug addiction, alcoholism, things like that. And I would watch Carl. Now, Carl was not the manager down there. Carl was an employee down at Wawa. And I would watch Carl deal with these people who were, let's just say, rough to deal with. And Carl would deal with these people with respect and kindness. Like, you have a loud person in there or somebody trying to get something over on somebody else. And Carl would always be nice to these people, even in those circumstances. And I pulled him aside. On the, that's how we, I guess we got them to know each other. And I pulled him to the side and I said, I recognize what you're doing and I recognize the difficulties that go along with dealing with difficult people. And you're doing an amazing job. Like, I watch that and it just warms my heart. You're an exceptional person. You're going places. So that's a conversation that I had with him. And if I remember correctly, he was beaming when I gave him like those compliments because they were, they were, they were heartfelt and they were true because that's an exceptional person that deals with difficult people with kindness and love. It makes me think of a uh, mother Teresa is, uh, is quoted as saying, you know, hugging huggable people is easy. Try hugging unhuggable people. <laughs> that gets a little difficult. <laughs> so when I thought about that interaction and I thought, I'm not that powerful. My words are going to propel somebody into doing better. I, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that maybe that those those that recognition of of the job that he was doing and the type of person that he was, maybe that gave him a little boost in his step, if that's what you say, or some kind of confidence or something like that. And now here he is, the manager at Wawa. Like I don't know what kind of money he make. I don't know if Carl's doing it for that because. He had that demeanor about him that he had four years ago, which was like he's an exceptionally nice, intelligent, down-to-earth kind of guy. And he is going places. Now what's coming to me is that we don't know what kind of impact we have on people with the words that we use with them. And I just think, like, I know from my personal experience that if somebody was maybe said some hurtful words or some something harsh to me, I'd carry that for a while. I don't do that that much anymore. But when somebody's kind to me or something like that, it has an even bigger impact. And I'd like to think that my words to Carl at least made him feel good that day. So, <laughs> that's what this video is about. Carl and my interaction today made me think that it's all worth it. And it does work. So I'm going to continue trying to practice it.